Welcome to the Jeff Lewis Trumpet Podcast, Episode 7. This is the Jeff Lewis Trumpet Show with your host, Jeff Lewis, where we talk about music, jazz, and all things related to the trumpet. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we are going to talk about how to transcribe, and I'm going to offer up three suggestions on three different ways on how I approach transcribing not only solos or or uh, trumpet solos. They could be trumpet solos, saxophone solos, or piano solos, whatever you're into, whatever piques your interest. The other thing I want to talk about is actually transcribing entire songs from the ground up, bass parts, piano parts, and chords as well. So let's get right to it. The first way, and this is the way I used to do it in college. Now remember, I went to college in the 80s and there was no transcribe. There was no any tune. There were none of these slow downers that allowed you to transcribe in an easy fashion. And what we used to do is, of course, use records and try to take that needle and put it back to exactly where you wanted it to go to, at the beginning of your transcription that you were trying to do. And of course, you were never successful exactly. And it was a painstaking way of transcribing solos, but it was the only way we had. And then finally, these micro set cassettes came out. And on the micro cassette, you could, it had a half speed on it. So that was, that was huge. And when you would, move the switch to half speed the solo would be twice as slow and it would drop down an octave so if it were a trumpet solo it would sound like a trombone but it would be twice as slow so i was so excited i remember trying to transcribe solos that were super fast and and just you know trying to transcribe like i was trying to transcribe a trombone solo anyway let's get into it the first method, and I think this is the least effective, this is the method I used to use when I was in college, is what I call the hunt and peck method. And what you would do is you're listening to your solo. You may hear the first three or four notes or the first note, and you go ahead and write that down immediately. So you hear a couple notes, you write them down, and then you figure out the rhythms, and you go from there. So you're not really internalizing the solo in my opinion and you're just writing them down so you haven't learned them you're not able to sing them at the same time and what you end up doing is just reading and memorizing the chart that you just made of that transcribed solo so this is the first method and this is not really the method i recommend i just don't think it's the most valuable but that being said, um, it is still a, a way of transcribing. In fact, I recently found a bunch of transcriptions I had done in college. You know, mind you, this is 35-ish years ago. And I, I couldn't remember this. I couldn't play the solos to this day from memory because they just didn't stick with me, unfortunately. But the ones that I did do by ear and learned by ear before I even wrote down a note, stuck with me to a certain extent. I mean, there is, of course, I don't have that great of a memory, but they did come back a whole lot easier. So before I get into the second way of transcribing, I would like to suggest, I'm not one of those purists where I think you need to do it all at the original speed and don't slow anything down, do it like the old masters would do by record. And I, you know, I just think, you know, if, if Lester Young had transcribed or he had the app, any tune on his iPhone, I, I'm, I just think those guys would use it. So, I mean, might as well use the tools that we have available to us. A lot of people say, well, you're not going to internalize it at the original speed. And yes, that is true. So you be the judge. I'll let you do it however, obviously, however you'd like. And I'd be curious to find out for those of you who actually do it at real speed and for those of you who also 
do transcribed solos at a slowed down tempo if there's any difference in how much you retain. So the second way of learning is to first be able to sing the solo back so you've memorized the solo and you can scat sing the solo or or whatever. I mean, you don't have to sound like Ella Fitzgerald or Louis Armstrong or whatever. Um, but to be able to have the solo memorized internally so much so that you could sing it back to some extent. Um, and a lot of times notes fly by so fast, you're not going to be that accurate. But at least you've internalized it and now you know how the solo goes and you can sing it. So that would be step one. The second part of this is to not write down any of the notes until you've actually learned the transcription by ear and have it memorized so that you're not doing what I did. You know, you write down the entire solo and then you're just learning it from from uh, uh, reading it. I would try that. Don't write anything down. And then also it would help to know the chords because a lot of times if you know the chords to the tune that you're learning, that can give you an idea of what the soloist is playing, at least partially. And then thirdly, go ahead and slow down those fast sections. The I have a couple of different apps that I use. One on my phone is called AnyTune, and I'll put a link in the show notes for that one. And I will also link the other one I use is Transcribe. Now, Transcribe is... Uh, uh, more expensive, obviously, um, because AnyTune is actually free. They have a free version of that app. And that's a great app because you can select sections and have those sections repeat and and you can slow them down. And there is some obviously some sound quality loss, but you're going to be able to hear enough of it so that you can actually discern notes for the most part. Unless you're getting down to about, you know, 50% of the original speed or less. So it does help to learn the chords. And finally, go ahead and write down the entire solo after you have it learned so that you're writing it down from memory. And that's a whole nother thing is like the notes is one thing, but the rhythms are another thing. So you're kind of, you're, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're learning licks and you're learning actual tones, pitches, and then try to figure out what the soloist is playing rhythmically. Now, the third and most difficult way of transcribing, in my opinion, I, I, I think most people would agree, is to actually transcribe the entire tune. So you'd be transcribing the chord changes and figuring out bass notes. You're figuring out the chords, and most of the time, chords are either major, minor, diminished, augmented, dominant, slash chords. The way I go about transcribing actual tunes is I try to figure out what the bass pitches are first, and generally the bass will be playing the roots on downbeats of the chord. So if, if a chord, if one chord lasts for an entire bar, the bass player generally plays the root on beat one of that bar. So if you have two chord changes in one bar, then the bass player will play the root on beat one and beat three. If that's, you know, the chords are on, happen on one and, and three. So I will do that first. I'll try to figure out the chords. Now also it helps to be able to figure out the melody. If you get the melody notes, a lot of times melodies are chord tones. So if you've got the bass, if you've got the melody notes, a lot of times you'll be able to figure out the rest of the harmonic puzzle, if you will. So that's really helpful. A lot of times it's kind of hunt and peck. You get behind a keyboard, you're figuring out the melody, you're figuring out the bass notes, and you just fill the rest in. Kind of easier said than done. Once again, this is a slower way of transcribing, but it's definitely the most beneficial. And it's also the best way to learn tunes rather than learning from a fake book or uh, a lead sheet or what may have you. Being able to transcribe the tune on your own 
is really beneficial and it tends to stay with you a lot longer and you'll 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 internalize the tune a whole lot uh, easier even though the actual process is much more difficult than actually reading a lead sheet so the other benefit you get from transcribing tunes is once you transcribe the tune go ahead and write it out figure out the rhythmic structure of the solo and then write out the chord changes on top of the solo and then analyze that solo so you can figure out what the soloist is exactly doing because you'll figure out that sometimes people are playing those funny wrong jazz notes and you're like why why does this sound so cool why does this work and You'll look on paper and you just go, this should be wrong. Why is he playing a major third against a minor third chord? And it just works because whoever's playing it played it with such confidence that that's exactly what they meant to play. Or they just made a mistake and maybe just, you know, flubbed the solo or forgot to change or just played a wrong note. I mean, it does happen not to everybody's perfect, even the greats. So this is a great way to um, start to learn the language and internalize the, internalize the language. Remember, jazz is just another language. It's like French or Spanish or German. We're just trying to copy, imitate, and replicate, and then internalize, and then add our own flavor and just become part of this jazz language or any any language. I mean, maybe you want to do a funk tune. You're looking at a hip-hop tune. It's all the same. You're just learning language. So just to recap, the first way of transcribing, and the easiest but yet the least beneficial, in my opinion, is what I call the hunt and peck method. The second one is to learn the solo by ear and be able to sing it first, and then go ahead and try to play the solo by ear before you write down any notes. Thirdly, the most beneficial way of transcribing is to actually transcribe the tune first with all the chords and the bass notes, usually starting with the bass notes, filling out the chords, Actually, what I usually do is I'll figure out the melody first, then I'll fill it, figure out the bass, uh, bass notes, and then I'll flesh out the rest of the chords. And then when I do that, I have the tune, I have the form of the tune, I have the chords, and then I will go ahead and transcribe whatever solo I'm interested in doing on that tune. So there you have it. Once again, the two slow down apps I use. Actually, the first one is an app. It's called AnyTune and it's free. You can upgrade. It's a couple bucks, I think. Actually, I'm not really sure how much it is, but I know there is a free version of AnyTune. I also use Transcribe, which has um, a little bit better sound quality than AnyTune. And then thirdly, there's the amazing Slow Downer, which is uh, an amazing name for something that does exactly what it says. It's a slow downer. And I don't use that one, but um, I don't know. You might want to check it out. I'm not sure what the price is. Anyway, I hope this short little podcast helps and gets you inspired to do some transcribing and learning this great language and all the other great languages of, of music. Be sure to go to my website, jefflewistrumpet.com, if you want to know a little bit more about me or you'd like... 11 scales for jazz improvisation when you subscribe to my email list. I'll shoot that out to you. That's free. I have some other tutorials on YouTube as well. And I also have a bunch of PDFs and I have some, you know, jazz duets and jazz etudes. I have a bunch of transcriptions on my website. Come out. Check out jefflewistrumpet.com and see uh, uh, if you like anything and uh, drop me a line. Let me know how it's going. And thank you so much for listening. We will catch you in the next podcast. 
Thanks for listening to the Jeff Lewis Trumpet Podcast at www.jefflewistrumpet.com.